Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1192, the mailbox pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. This is a fun little double spinner design so that the mailbox flag will come up and the door will come down, revealing a cute little love note as the card opens. There are nine dies in the set, lots of fun features, but I'm going to start with the pop-up mechanism, which is this die here. And for this mechanism, I would actually prefer a lighter weight smooth cardstock, 65 pound or 80 would be fine. But if you're using that thin cardstock, sometimes it's hard to see the score lines. So my suggestion is to double it. So just fold your cardstock in half or put some scrap cardstock underneath it so that you get a lot of pressure against that die to really show the score lines in the piece. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. And today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. So I'm only going to need one per mailbox, so I'm just gonna use the top one because that's the one where I really see the score lines the best. Although I can see them in the second one too, so I'll have that for another card. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to sketch in the score lines that the die has made. So there are three vertical score lines, and those are what make the pop-up box. So that's what makes the mailbox pop up. And then there are diagonal folds that make the spinner. So that's what makes the flag and the door move. So I'm just going to sketch those in following the score lines that the die has made. There's a little arm at the top. That's actually going to fold over at some point. So there's a score line right at the base. And then if you want to just mark to remember, that's where the glue is going to go to, to attach it after we've folded it. And then the two tabs that are going to glue into the card are the one on the left, I'm going to call that A, and the one on the right, I'm going to call that B. Now I'm going to start folding, and the first folds I'm going to do are the three verticals. They are all going to fold away from me like a mountain fold. I'm ignoring everything else, so I'm just working on the verticals. And you can see right through this area, well that's loose, that's fine, still just fold it on the vertical. Just keep it all together while you fold that vertical. And you can see the pop-up box now. Now I'm going to work on the upper spinner, the one that operates the flag. So I've got opposite diagonal folds. So the way to work those together is to fold on the vertical. Then I can put my thumbnail into the diagonal fold and work it through both layers back and forth a couple times. And that way it'll train those two diagonal folds. Then I'm going to open the piece to 90 degrees and I'm going to push against the vertical fold in the triangle areas and then that will invert them so that they fold into the piece as I close it down. So the two triangles will then fold inward. Okay, let me just show that one more time. So I'm gonna bring that back out where I started. I fold on the vertical. That allows me to fold on the diagonal through both layers. I open to 90 degrees. I press so that the triangles fold into the piece and then I close it down and give it a good pinch. Okay, so those are the triangle folds for the upper spinner. And now let's talk about the triangle folds for the bottom spinner. In this case, we have a loose end. So while I could fold on the vertical and go through both layers, I really don't have to. I can do them one at a time. So the diagonal fold that's closest to the B tab, I'm going to fold over the top on that one. So on that diagonal, bring the whole arm over and then back up again. Then I'm going to fold on the other diagonal. So I'm essentially making like a little accordion fold of this little strip so that it just folds on those diagonals and makes those triangles and in the closed position, it just lines up right here. Okay, now let's move back to the upper spinner again because you've got this arm attached and that needs to fold over the top now and glue down into that little spot where the pen line is. So right there where I marked that pen line just staying within the folds, I need to add a strong adhesive. I prefer glue for this. So I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle and we do sell both of those items on our website. Okay, and then once that sets up, as the triangles fold in, you'll see that that arm sticks out to the side and then it comes down. So that's kind of how it operates the flag. And my suggestion is fold one of these up like this and just keep it with your die set for future cards that you've got to go by. There are three dies in the set that combine to make the mailbox and of course you can cut those out of any pattern or color. However, if you want it to look like a metallic mailbox, it's cool to use either a gray cardstock with some shimmer in it or you could go full mirror cardstock. This one's gunmetal from the paper cut. And then here's a brushed silver that I'm going to use today. 
these dies have an optional emboss feature. And when you have brand new dies, I like to do the embossing step first. So I'm taping those down temporarily to my cardstock, and then I'm setting up my machine for an embossing sandwich. And it depends on the machine. So if you haven't embossed a wafer thin die with your machine before, just go check on YouTube. Everything can be found on YouTube. Figure out what the sandwich is and whether you need to buy some additional accessories. With a Spellbinders Platinum 6, the embossing sandwich comes with the machine. So if you emboss those pieces, you'll get raised areas on the die. But this is not cut yet, so embossing a wafer-thin die is a two-step process. You have to emboss and then cut, or cut and then emboss. Either way works. I just like to do the embossing step first. The embossing on the mailbox is going to give the illusion of rivets across the bottom and some metal bands front and back. The embossing on the door is going to give a raised line at the top, and then the embossing on the circle is just going to give an raised circle in the center, but that is going to line up perfectly with the flag. So embossing that circle is great because it makes the flag easy to add and get it perfectly centered. For the flag, I just like a red cardstock, and then there's a piece of grass in the die set. And then there is a die that will cut 10 tiny hearts, and they are three different sizes on that die, so you do get some variety, and I've used some glitter paper for that. So by embossing that circle, it's really easy for me to add the flag because the circle is going to line up right over that embossed circle, leaving just a little bit of the embossed one showing. So it kind of gives some nice dimension, and that will perfectly center the flag. Okay, when you're looking at the door of the mailbox and trying to figure out which way is which, that little divot at the bottom is actually meant to be the handle where you would pull the door open if it was a mechanical mailbox. So it's actually this triangle end that attaches to the pop-up. So the end of that door, that triangle end, is sized so that it will fit and attach perfectly to the right triangle of the lower spinner. So that right triangle is going to attach to that door. So see if I fold this down, you can see how it's the same shape. Does it attach under or over that triangle? It doesn't matter, under or over. But maybe if you have a smooth cardstock on the back of your metallic, you'd rather attach it over because then you're attaching the smooth side of the cardstock instead of the metallic side, if that makes sense. So I want to attach the smooth side. So I'm going to take that whole arm and fold it down on the diagonal, and then I'm going to attach it right here so that it's sticking out straight towards the B tab. So I'm going to add my adhesive in that triangle, just like that. Then I take that end of the door so that it's sticking straight out over the B tab, just kind of lined up with the fold so the triangle matches the triangle, and I can still fold my accordion down over the top of it, and it should be sticking straight out to the right, and then as I lift that up, you'll see the movement of the door. And remember, when you buy our die sets, you get written instructions as well. These are on the back flap of the packaging of the die you purchase. So don't throw away your packaging. You always have this in diagram form to refer to. Okay, I'm going to kind of fold that bottom spinner out of the way. So I just have some access here to this big flat part of the pop-up, and that's going to get a nice strong adhesive to attach the mailbox. I'm going to use the lower left corner to line up the mailbox, but first I need to make sure that the arm on the upper spinner comes through the hole on the mailbox. And now I'm just using that lower left corner of the mailbox for alignment. So the bottom edges will line up perfectly right along here, and then the fold line right along the edge of the mailbox. On the front you can see that the arm from the upper spinner is coming through the hole. Okay, turning it over now, I can work on attaching the lower spinner. So before I can attach this, I need to find the flat position of the pop-up. So I just need to collapse down the pop-up until it's laying flat against the back of the mailbox. And you'll see you've got the B tab there. You've got the flag arm coming straight through the hole. And then it's really easy to flatten out the second spinner into the flat position as well. So in this flat position, the door is up. And then I can use the edge of the mailbox to get a nice connection on that final tab. So I just need to add my glue to that final tab, keeping everything flat. I just use the mailbox to line it up so that it's just perfectly straight across there. And then now it is all put together. So the door is up right now, but then when the card opens, this will open and it'll bring the door down. So as you hold the mailbox 
and you just operate the folds there on the back, you can see the double motion that you're getting with those two spinners. Card size is always up to you, and the mailbox pop-up is slimline friendly. So I'm going for a mini slimline today, which means I started with a piece of cardstock, seven inches by six and a quarter inches, and then scored in the middle for folding. Then I cut white cardstock panels that are a little smaller, so three and an eighth by five and seven eighths. And on the white panels, what I did is used our Nature Edges die set, which has a double stitched cloud die, and cut through each panel three times. Then I add ink with a blending tool just to the bottom edge of each of the top three sections. Then I can just line those up and glue them into the card. So just a way to kind of imitate the look of a cloud stencil by using dies. The Nature Edges die set also has a grass edger, so I've used that to add some panels of grass to the bottom. Okay, card base is done, and I just need to add the post to the mailbox, and then I'm ready to add it to the card. So there is a stamping feature on the mailbox post die. So the stamping is optional. If you run the post die through with no ink, you'll still get the texture into it. It'll just press it in and it'll be tone on tone. Now, how can you add ink? You have choices. You could use maybe a little ink cube. So that's pretty easy because you can just kind of pounce the ink onto the die. Or you could use a brush marker and you could brush the ink onto the surface. Or you can use any kind of large ink pad. So we discovered this wonderful tool already on the market that is great for picking up our stamping dies without getting inky fingers, and that is the Spellbinders Magnetic Pickup Tool. So it's got a magnet in it. It will easily pick up the die for you. You can move it over onto your die cutting machine, press the button to release the magnet, and then you don't have any inky fingers. We do have those magnetic pickup tools available on our website. So here's how that looks with ink. Cleanup of a stamping die is just water and a rag. You don't need any kind of harsh chemicals. Just spray some water onto the die and then wipe it off with a rag. As for placement on the post, there is that little recessed area behind the mailbox that is the perfect location. So just a little bit of glue, and then you can use the corner to make sure that it's straight. And of course, completely optional, but there is that little piece of grass that comes in the set that looks kind of cute at the base of the mailbox post. So then I just glue that to the post. Okay, time to add the mailbox, and I'm going to choose my vertical location first, and I'm choosing a spot where the grass is kind of in line with the grass behind. And then the A tab is going to attach first, so I'm going to add my adhesive all over the front of the A tab, and where it's going to attach is actually to the left side of the card. So I could hold it on the right and close the card against it, or I can flip it over. I think for this pop-up, I prefer just to flip it over. And then I'm attaching it so that the end of the A tab is just right in the fold of the card. Okay, so you can see right there, end of the tab, right into the fold of the card. And now I need to find the flat position, which I remember from when I put this thing together, right? So it's not just the little B tab that should be folded inward, but it's actually the B tab and the next one folded inward. And then that will bring that door to the up position and you should see the B tab and the tab next to it, but it is only the B tab that gets the adhesive. So I'm adding the adhesive to the B tab, then I'm going to keep everything flat and carefully close the right side of the card against the exposed adhesive. And this is where I have to be a little patient because if I open it too quickly, it's just going to pull that tab right off of there. Sometimes what I like to do is find some kind of tool, a pencil, a bone fold or something like that, or even just my thumb and go in there and hold that tab down the first time I open it. And then once I get it opening and spinning, then I can actually press it all the way down and give it a really good press. And that is all there is to it. So now both the pop-up spinners are working. Okay, taking a look at the arm that comes through the hole on the mailbox, you'll notice that a lot of it is visible in the open position, but as you close it, a lot of it ducks back behind the mailbox. So the important thing to know there is in the open position, when you're adding your adhesive, just put it out on the end of the arm. So not too much adhesive, just a dot of adhesive at the end. And then with the card as open as you want it to be, whatever your open position is, that's where I usually place the flag up. So I'm going vertical with the flag with the card fully open, but I have an important consideration, which is the corner of the flag at the top 
cannot be above the mailbox when the card is fully open or else when it goes to close, it'll catch behind the mailbox. So that's important. So as you add that flag, make sure that you keep it in the fully open position so that a little bit of the flag is overlapping the mailbox. If the flag is attached too high, what'll happen is that corner will try to go behind the mailbox and it will not work that way. Now, if you accidentally place it too high and it's going to ruin your card to pull it off of there, Fran has a good solution. She just put a little bit of transparency in that corner underneath there to keep the flag always in front of the mailbox. So you can fix it with a little piece of transparency if you need to, but if you will keep that little corner of the flag at least overlapping a bit of the mailbox, it will be fine. The die set includes this tiny little envelope, which is so cute, it cuts and it scores, and it has a decorative stitch line. So on the side flaps, the score line is close to the stitch line, and as such, if you just try to fold it, sometimes it'll just try and fold on the stitch line instead of the score line. So my suggestion is to use a ruler to do your folding. So what you do is on the front, you just put the ruler up to the score line, which is not where the stitch line is, it's right at the corners and then just fold towards yourself first so that it finds that score line and then reverse it. And that's really only necessary for the side flaps because the stitch line is so close to the score line. For the upper and lower flaps, it's no problem. You can just fold them by hand. You won't really need the ruler to do it. That is designed so that you can use it as a working envelope. So when you look at the, the side flaps, you'll notice that they're closer to one edge, which is the bottom. And when you want to make it an actual working envelope, you just need a little bit of glue along that edge, and then the bottom flap will overlap it. And then you can still tuck things inside that envelope. Or if you're just planning on using it sealed up, you can just glue all four flaps down. If you brush a little ink across the envelope, it'll really highlight those stitch lines. And then one of the tiny hearts over the seam. To add it to the door of the pop-up, I just add the adhesive to the door along that embossed line and then just press the envelope to it. And do place that envelope far out on the door, as far out as you can go, so that it will clear the pop-up in the closed position. So see, it has to raise up and clear the pop-up. And then I added some more of those little glitter hearts to the background of the card, kind of flying out from the envelope, but didn't pay attention to my catch point right there. So I actually lucked out because it's not catching bad enough that I have to move that heart. But do pay attention to an item in that location that it doesn't create a catch point for your envelope. Another cute look is to slide a little square of cardstock into an open envelope with one of the hearts and then maybe tuck that into the grass. And as I add items to the pop-up, I always like to close the card and make sure that I haven't placed them in a location where they stick out when the card is closed. In this same release, we have the butterfly collage add-ons and any of the big stitched butterflies work well to make wings for the envelope for a little bit of air mail. So I'm just cutting off the upper wings and then separating them into two separate wings, gluing them behind the envelope. And then as a place to sign the card, I have layered a couple of the hearts out of our hearts crosshatch die set. And then a sprinkling of three more glitter hearts to finish the card's interior. I'm just going to repeat elements to make the front of the card. So the same background with the cloud edges, and then another one of the envelopes with the butterfly wings, and then our new sending love as a greeting. And then just some more glitter hearts to finish up. Now you can use the mailbox as a flat embellishment. You can just not use the mechanism at all and glue the pieces on at whatever you know angle that you want. Of course, they're not gonna move at that point. Now that ended up being a little wide for my mini slimline, but that would look lovely on a larger card. If this were a full slimline, I would use a number 10 business envelope, but it's a mini slimline, so it actually fits in that shorter business envelope, which is called for some reason a number six and three quarters, even though it's only six and a half inches long. If anyone knows why, please leave a comment below. I use pretty much the same combination of dies on the card that I made for the packaging for the mailbox pop-up. I did include on the front of the card the monkey from our new monkey and lion die set. And you can absolutely use the mailbox in those wider cards. Here's one where I've used Photoplay's Love Letters collection, which just matches perfectly with the mailbox. 
Okay, so I generally don't like to make assembly videos this long, but we had a lot to cover and I do still want to show you some great inspiration by our very talented design team. Here is an adorable slimline size card by Fran Sabad. This is the actual card that Fran was referring to when she said that she accidentally put her flag too tall on the mailbox and it was catching, so she added a piece of acetate to solve that. And this card by Frances Byrne giving some ideas for holiday cards using the mailbox is just gorgeous. I love how she added the wreath and the swags and used the mailbox flat on the front of the card as well. Kelly Booth made this super cute Valentine. This is the card front. And then inside she has the mailbox pop up. I like how she tucked the hearts behind the hills in the background. Just adorable. I like how Karen Aiken has used the mailbox as just a hello thinking of you card with her signature white pen detailing on the flag. Lois Bach made a fun you've got mail card, a happy birthday card using the mailbox pop up and you can definitely see the different card sizes being used here. Here's another card by Lois this time happy St. Patrick's Day. So you can definitely use the mailbox year round for any occasion, any theme. The mailbox pop-up is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers and will be available from our website, KarenBerniston.com, starting January 24th, 2022. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.